Hey everybody, we're finally back in action here at the lab. And yes, taking precautionary measures, wearing masks to protect one another, even though we have great ventilation systems here in the building uh, where we do all this wet chemistry. Uh, today I have some interesting things to show you, and that is I wanted to show you what it's like when we go to work up chemical reactions. And when we say work up, that means once our chemical process is complete, how do we handle the material? And how do we end up purifying that material? And what considerations do we have to make? So today I have a, an interesting situation for you where I have two different basic reactions. And when I say basic, I mean they're as, a basic in terms of acid and base, basicity. Uh, but they're two very different reagents. And so the way that we ha have to handle those is different for that reason. But I'll go ahead and show you. So here, I have a case where I have, I'm running two reactions at once, and I'll show you the differences in the way they behave, and I'll show you why they end up behaving in this way. So in one case, I'm getting ready to uh, work these up, and you can see that I have my material here on ice. And so that gives you some hint as to which one of these is going to be a little bit more aggressive during the workup, uh, whereas the one at room temperature perhaps uh, you know, and it might be a little bit more reasonable to handle. And the reason that is, is that when we cool down a, a chemical reaction or a process here, we limit the amount of energy available to that system. And so we can get a better control of it. We can get more selective processes to occur. And it just makes things a lot easier overall. So take a look at this here and uh, note what happens as I go to quench this reaction. So I'm starting to add in this, and this is just water at this moment. And I'm doing this slowly, and let's see if we see any change occur in the reaction vessel itself. It seems to be behaving relatively well. So let's see if we can speed up this process. So now I'm dumping in some acid into this reaction, and we can see the appearance of bubbles in the reaction solution. So when this type of things occurs, if you do not keep these at a lower temperature and you don't control the rate that you go and punch this material, you can end up with explosions of, of gas shooting out of the reaction vessel. Fortunately, in this case, we're not having a big trouble. But um, for a lot of people, especially when they're starting out, not being aware of these types of things and not controlling these types of things can create issues and, and, um, and messes in the lab. And so. You can imagine if we didn't control the rate that we quench this at, if we didn't have it on ice, if we didn't control how, how fast um, it stopped, then we would end up with all this material here on the ground all around and it makes you just lose that material and it, it creates just a big mess that you have to deal with later. So conversely, I have this material here in this reaction and this is actually not ideal because as you can see I have less than 50% of headspace available to allow for any expansion or contraction of the materials in there. However, this reaction I'm fairly familiar with and uh, I don't expect to, any, and to have any troubles as I'm, I'm dealing with it. And so you can see in this case I had no, no real visible bubbles as, as you know, perhaps compared to this one. So let's slow it down, take a closer look. You can see I'm, I'm forming aggregates and, and uh, those are producing bubbles. This one, on the other hand, even though they're both stirring, it's relatively tame. It looked like there was some, some change happening in there, but overall pretty tame. And what's going on in these two? So this process we'll call reaction one. This process we'll call reaction two. And I have the schemes drawn up here. So reaction one is actually what we call reduction with aluminum hydride. And uh, so this is kind of like the basic idea of what's going on here, where when we take this hydride, and we mix it in with water, we can form this lithium hydroxide and aluminum hydroxide, but most importantly, we produce hydrogen gas from the interaction of this base and this acid. So we can also facilitate this by introducing acid, which I did uh, to help move it along, but this is the basic process. Basically, your aluminum hydride is going to end up forming aluminum hydroxide. And in fact, the addition of the acid helps formation of this and helps break up some of those aggregates that we saw in there to just make the material much more easy to handle. And this reaction process too, I just have what's called an enolate. Uh, in this case, it's a vinylogous enolate. Uh, but in that case, we do the same thing where it acts as a base and it deprotonates water and we can help this along by introducing acid as well. But in this case, the two products, they're not gases. So this case, uh, if you isolated this, it's a solid, but it dissolves very uh, well in, in water, especially. 
And this thing is an organic, uh, more like an oil, so um, it's more like a, a slightly viscous liquid, but in any case, it, it doesn't uh, evolve as gas like hydrogen does. So when we create hydrogen from this aluminum hydride species, that's where we're seeing that gas form, and that's where you can end up with big messes. In the case of here, we are not producing any gas, and that's why it's so much more well-behaved. But this is a case where two basic conditions, you know, need to be handled with very differently, and you need to take different considerations when you when you go to uh, isolate your materials from those processes. And so, thanks for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed that little insight into what it's like there. You can see here, so I dumped in water and we have all my organic materials sitting on top of that water that I threw in. So I threw in a little bit of acidic water. And in this case, it's still very chunky. It's, it's not dissolving well. I'll probably have to just, um, introduce a little bit more acid to help form that aluminum hydroxide that I was mentioning here. Uh, but thanks for tuning in. I hope you all have a good week.